how to become your new self and how to let go of your old self. Hey guys, hope you are well. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how to completely let go of your old self and how to become the new version of you that you want to be. So in this video, I will be talking about three points that I think everyone who has ever went a transformation from their old self to a new self has went through. And this is something that comes from a recent conversation with a client where I was discussing this with her and I was giving her these pointers so that I will now explain these things to you and we will go into this step by step. One thing that is very important is to first fix our correct expectations of what will happen once we are getting into this journey. Because most of the times people who struggle with changing are not actually struggling with changing. They are struggling with unhealthy expectations. And they have unhealthy expectations with the process and because of which whenever you are getting into it, you're not actually able to change properly because you go through this journey, but in the middle part, there is something that comes up, some unhealthy expectation or some unrealistic expectation that arises because of which we aren't in a position where we are able to make it better. And then we aren't able to improve ourselves through it. So let's first fix and set some expectations on what this process will look like, especially when we are talking about these things. So the first expectation that you need to understand and set is that this is a process that takes time. Now, when I say that this is a process that takes time, this is not me saying that you cannot get your manifestations fast. This is basically me saying that for you to cement the mindset of the version of who you who you want to be, it is going to take time because the old version of you was built over a period of years till now, whatever you have been through in your life, everything you have done, every action that you have taken has got you to this place. And because it has gotten you to this place, you are someone who is accumulation of all these things. And if you want to change that, of course, it is not going to happen instantly. So creating this expectation in your mind first that this change might take some time, not necessarily years, but it might take some consistent effort is important. Secondly, while you are changing the old self, the old man, as Neville Goddard says, is going to come up at some point, which is what we call resistance. So resistance is a very normal part of the journey. And in fact, resistance comes as a perfect opportunity for us to surpass it. Which means whenever I'm facing resistance towards something, it means I'm doing something right. That is why this old self is retaliating back. It is giving me these things back that I need to face now to get better from. So whenever resistance comes, always accept that, you know what, resistance is going to be a part of this journey and not something that I need to run away from. And the third thing is you will make some mistakes, which is fine. So give yourself some grace period. But that doesn't mean that you will have to make mistakes which are very easily avoidable. I will talk about this as we go ahead, but just to give you an example, for example, I'm doing something and I unconsciously react towards something. That is something that is a mistake that I can give myself a grace period for, but consciously choosing to stalk my specific person on social media, for example, is something I can totally avoid. So you need to understand that there is a difference between things that you need to give yourself a grace period for and things that you need to take total accountability for. Because whenever it comes down to your actions, taking total accountability of it is the only way to go. But whenever there is something that requires you to change your feeling or change your state, these are things that can take time and you need to actually give yourself some grace period. So now let's understand these three things that I would want you to start with so that you can completely let go of your old self and get into basically emphasizing more on and embracing your new version, embracing your new self. So. The old self that we usually talk about is nothing but a mixture of the things that we do in the current moment, the things that we assume and the thoughts that we have. I'm going to oversimplify it for you so that you understand it the best. We all have a past, right? And based on the past, we create our conditions. I will explain it to you with the help of an example. Let's say there is this guy, his name is Joe. I have given Joe's name in many videos. A lot of people ask me if you know someone Joe. No, I have a few clients who's, who, who are named this, but I just give this example randomly. Let's say there is a guy named Joe and he has had a series of relationships which he doesn't really want to be in. Now, this can be relationships with, with family, with people, with friends, and he has a past with money that he doesn't really appreciate and doesn't want to continue with. Now, in this current moment, this conditioning is what has made Joe, Joe, right? This is his subjective experience. The world through which he views the, the lenses through which he views the world is through his past experiences and through his past conditions. But 
in this current moment those past conditions don't truly really exist right so it exists in his mind through his resistance through his feelings through the things that he perceives and through the actions that he takes and the last thing which is very important is through the things that he does and justifies to his past i will explain this as we move ahead this will be slightly difficult to understand so i will explain this as we move ahead but eventually all of these things that joe is has went through is in the now moment affecting him in some way if these things wouldn't be affecting him in some way he wouldn't be worried about it right how it is affecting him is either through his thoughts the thoughts that he gets about things his perceptions about things his actions the things that he does or whenever he uses his past as a justification to do something now which is something i was talking about before which means for example let's say joe takes a bad money decision he can just instead of taking responsibility of it say that you know what this bad thing happened in my past this is my past conditioning because of which i took this decision so in the current moment joe is taking this decision but he is justifying it on the past this doesn't mean that he didn't go through what he went through in the past this is not me trying to victim shame or not me trying to tell him that you know you are not justified in your feeling bad this is me trying to tell him that even if you were in that situation right now in this current moment what you do moving forward is your responsibility so the old self if we have established comes out through these situations there are three things that we can do and three activities that we can do that can help us get out of this old self that we are so so stuck in so the first thing is to understand that you will need to map this out this is not something that is going to take one day so map this out take a piece of paper and something that you can keep with yourself you can even write this in your phone if you feel that you know you have more access to it so you can even write this in your phone i personally do these activities on uh, a journal in a journal or uh, through writing because i feel it makes me connected but if you feel that you want to go at it another way that's completely fine so the first activity is to write down what are the triggers that make me trigger my old self in this particular instance we will only be talking about relationships because i just want to use that as an example as more people are struggling from that who watch my content so if you are someone who is struggling from relationships the first thing that you and let's say let's take an example that you have an anxious attachment style right so you feel that i have an anxious attachment style which is developed from my self concept and my past and this can change so never never stick yourself that oh i am just anxiously attached all the time no you have this anxious attachment style right now based on your past conditions right now this doesn't mean that you cannot change it you can be secure you can actually develop that so never never stick to this but let's say i do have this for the sake of this example now this anxious attachment style is something that will come out through some triggers they will either be perceived triggers or they will be real triggers let's talk about it with an example so let's say i text a person and this person doesn't text me back now this is one trigger that is making me react the trigger being i texted this person and this person didn't text me back right this is one trigger so first write down all the triggers that you have this is the first activity write down all the things that trigger you after you have written down diversify them if this is a perceived trigger or a real trigger for example in this moment this is a perceived trigger this is not a real trigger till now because this person hasn't said anything till now for me to assume the worst case right so i am just triggered because this action happened basically i can write down when someone doesn't text me back i feel triggered that is an impulse that makes me triggered now is this a real trigger or a perceived trigger this one is a perceived trigger well but someone comes and tells me that they don't like me that's a real trigger there are two different things right the first step is to writing this down the second step is to write down what are the first perceptions the instinctive perceptions that you have when it comes to this so when this person let's say doesn't text me back when it comes to the perceived trigger then what is my first assumption what is my first thought about it so in this situation my first thought is if this person isn't texting me back that means i'm not important to them you see how this first instinct is teaching me what my true belief about the situation is right it is teaching me what i truly believe about this and the last thing to write down the third activity to do is to write down what are my actions in front of it so i text this person this does person doesn't text me back in the face of it i assume that this means that this person doesn't like me and in the face of it maybe my action is to text them 3 4 times asking them for reassurance right this is something i have identified as a pattern of the old me now if you truly 
look at this and when you will truly write all these things down, you will also find out that you can break at the pattern at any given point of time. So I will help you understand how you can break this in this situation. Let's say the first point is that the person didn't text me back and I'm perceiving this to be an attack on me, right? First thing I can do is to tell myself, great. In this situation, I'm looking at this situation from my past because maybe in the past, someone didn't text me back, which made me anxious about this. But this person is not actually doing so and I don't have to assume the worst case scenario. Here, my mental conversation will be my way to get out of this. This is what inner conversation is, right? This is how I can break this old pattern instantly here now before it going anywhere, right? Let's say I have went forward from this and I have already thought of this as a trigger and I'm unable to make it my, make myself feel better because of it. The second trigger that comes up is that I am perceiving that this means that this person doesn't like me. Great. How to break that? By talking yourself out of it. Again, mental conversation. Has this person actually given me right now any evidence to believe that they don't do so? Am I actually assuming the worst case scenario? Why am I assuming the worst case scenario? Is it to keep myself feel safe? Is it to assume the worst so that if the worst happens, I'm not blindsided? You see how asking these questions will help you break the monotony and break the cycle of negative dwelling. And once you break the cycle of negative dwelling, getting out of it becomes very easy. Because if you are observing this, now you are the observer, now you are not the thinker, you will be able to get out of this better. But if you are even not able to get out of this better, the last thing to do, which is completely in your control, which is something you can take complete responsibility of, is to tell yourself that the last action that comes out of these triggers is not something I will take. So if this makes me text this person five times for reassurance, that is something I can definitely avoid. Because if I do avoid that, then I'm breaking this old pattern here and now. I'm not letting it turn into something serious and I'm not letting it turn into a habit. If I do this, over a period of time with all the things that I feel are not going good for me and all the things that I don't want to be a part of the new me, I will definitely break out of the pattern of being me, the old me, which is someone I don't really want to be anymore. This doesn't mean the old me is bad. The old me is the thing that has kept me alive till now. My habits, whatever they have been, are the things that have kept me alive till now. Yes. Have I struggled? Yes. Have I not liked it sometimes? Yes. Does that mean that I will give up anything to change my past? No, because the past is what has made you you now. And you being you right now, if you're watching this video, you have the opportunity to change because you know that there is something inside of you that you can apply, which can help you change. Otherwise, you wouldn't be on a manifestation page watching manifestation content. And if you are here, which means you have the perfect tools to be able to change yourself. So apply them. I wish you all the best with it. And I will see you guys in the next video. And the next one is going to be a success story, which you will all love. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and share if you like the video. The link for my one on one coaching, my self help courses, and my free newsletter are in the description box below.